Okay, we'll call this part three. And uh, what I'm going to do is just focus on a bit of detail now. That can cause a few little problems on the 3.9 EFIs and uh, the various little uh, gremlins that can sit in there, uh, really. And a lot of it's through lack of maintenance or parts wearing out. So I'll be using the ECU, mate. And I've got some examples here of a part that I've replaced. I get all my parts from British parts in the UK. I find them absolutely fantastic for shipping stuff overseas. Very quick service and... Um, you, you sort of go online, pick what you want, and uh, within five days they're here in New Zealand, so I can't sort of fault that. Um, okay, what I'm going to look at today is um, the stepper motor, or sometimes called the uh, idle uh, control valve, and this is the little unit here. Um, basically what this unit does is it has a little plunger on the end, and the plunger moves in and out, and it basically adjusts the idle uh, base idle settings on the unit, um, and uh, to settle the engine uh, down at around about um, 750 revs or thereabouts according to the uh, the workshop manual. What can happen over time is um, these things get all carboned up on these little pins here. Um, they get worn a bit loose and slack and uh, just generally wear out and end up causing problems um, with idle uh, on your engine. Uh, what you can do is you can actually unscrew these and take them out. Um, it's quite easy to do. That's where the unit sits on the back of the plenum chamber. This literally screws into there. Uh, what you can do is unscrew the unit completely out and clean it with the uh, carburetor cleaner and this, that and the other. Get the pin clean um, and um, uh, screw it back in and then plug your little box on. Um, it generally does sort the problem out, but it doesn't resolve the issue. If the part's worn, the best way to sort of resolve it is to completely replace it. Um, and like I said on one of the earlier videos, what can happen is, is you can put a new unit in and it can um, cause no end of problems simply because you've got to reset the unit and unless you've got an ECU mate or something like that that can actually go in there and uh, readapt the values for the ECU, it can end up causing you more problems than you started off with and then you start thinking there's a fault somewhere else but actually it's a new unit that you put in that's not been reset properly. Um, one of the advantages of the ECU mate is that it does actually allow you to actually control the unit yourself so basically what you do is you plug the box of tricks in and uh, you can adjust the stepper motor to um, uh, to uh, get a really good base idle uh, with it. Now the base idle on my particular uh, Land Rover is working absolutely fine so what I'm not going to do is um, adjust it but what I will do is I will show you how um, it actually works I'll flash the uh, the Land Rover up and focus into detail on the actual readings on the ECU mate and then on top of that I'll actually um, stop my engine and then um, plug in the unit this old unit and you can see the how the piston moves in and out and, and how it actually works um, again when you're buying these parts you can buy some of them that are quite cheap um, and I replaced mine with a genuine Land Rover part and there is a difference in the quality uh, uh, with it and that's not to say some of the cheaper ones don't work but the way I look at it is this has been on the vehicle for over 100,000 Ks and um, it's finally give up the ghost so it hasn't done bad really okay well what we'll do is we'll just run through the startup procedure again so on with the key bang get your ECU live and then what we'll do is I'll zoom in a little bit closer now because it wasn't too clever uh, when I did the um, the last one so you can see a bit more detail so it says uh, press run uh, to get ECU fault cords on next so we may as well see if there are any faults existing so it's connecting to the um, ECU unit no faults have been uh, uh, reported which always um, keeps me pleased so uh, the next step what I'm going to do then is I'll just stop that and I do want to clear the faults no and this is giving you some of the readings that I talked about before which you couldn't quite clearly see water temperature 36 fuel uh, 24 your pot and your rpm at uh, zero which evidently the car's not running but what we're going to do at the moment we're going to focus on the um, on the um, uh, stepper motor 
So um, we may as well uh, jump into that uh, and have a look at it. So it's saying there, stepper motor status position. And what you can do with this unit um, is you can actually fiddle with the values of it. So I can extend it and retract it and that can adjust your revs. But what I'm going to do at the moment is I'm just going to start the car, the Land Rover, and then you can see this actually uh, works. So I'll just start the car. And there you go. So what happens is you can see the value being read here and um, again it says in the actual manual which I've referred to and the manual is uh, a really good manual that if the unit um, general base value of the manual is about 109 you can see mine running at 114 it does vary from car to car and this value does change um, uh, I don't I, I, I think once you've got you set up the base idle value using the ECU mate by extending or retracting um, it generally stays around that and you'll watch now when I rev the engine you'll see that this value will change as it adjusts only a tiny little bit I'll drop it down and you can see it's actually moving and um, it will reset itself around about that mark 109 110 uh, with it and it does vary it does vary from time to time but the point being is the true test is how well that your actual vehicle is idling so what I'll do is I'll move through it and you can see um, when I go through this the most uh, important part is the revs uh, uh, with it see it's not hunting up and down um, slightly high at the moment around about the uh, eight uh, eight uh, just over 800 but that's because the, the the engine's stone cold so as the engine warms up generally the revs just die down a little bit there and you can see some of the readings there. water temperature 43 fuel temperature 16 pot and then your revs uh, with it so what I'll do now is I'll just um, uh, tap out of this and uh, go into showing you how it actually adjusts the um, the stepper motor. I'll talk through it actually, and the reason for that is is that um, I've got my um, vehicle uh, running so well at the moment in terms of the um, uh, idle position. I don't really want to fiddle with it, but uh, what I'll do is I'll just talk through it and. Um, and uh, and but at the same time just focus on the um, the actual um, ECU mate uh, with it and uh, I'll give you some ideas so okay it's probably a better way of doing it actually so there's a stepper motor status at the moment and there's a stepper motor that fits into the back of your uh, plenum chamber and what this little unit allows you to do by either selecting re, um, retract or extend and using the red button it allows you to move this piston in and out and what that does is that allows you to vary the um, uh, idle engine idle revs until you get them down at a comfortable position and um, uh, and, and steady your idle down. Um, I generally find in reality doing this, you have to do it two or three times. I don't know whether it's whether the ECU remembers things or or um, or how it quite works. But all I know is that if you do it two or three times, and the way I find this works is is um, retract it in as far as you possibly can, so you get high revs, generally about 15, 1600 revs. Uh, leave it, let it drop down. Um, the ECU then tries to adjust the plunger itself, and it generally ends up setting at a thousand revs or slightly high tick over. So what I do is I retract it a little bit, and then sometimes by doing that, um, you end up with it hunting. So I extend it again and keep fiddling with it until you end up with a nice steady tick over, and that's what we've got at the moment. And again, this is now as the engine's warming up. You can see. The, uh, that figure's changing slightly now, 139, and that's just indicating really what the relative position of this plunger is as how this machine sees it. Um, the, the, the ECU manual that you get here um, gives you a great example um, of how it works and explains what the values mean and also explain how those values tie in with the um, ECU um, your, your 14 uh, CUX ECU. So anyway, I'm not going to rabble on too much, but that's just a, if you will, like a bite-sized chunk on how this works, how the ECU mate runs into it and reads it, and um, how you can use the ECU mate to adjust this uh, and look at the values of it. So I'll sign out from that, and then what I'll do is I'll cover another uh, topic off um, shortly.